This video is an in-depth tutorial on how to build and analyze your concept tests on the AYTM platform in order to maximize the power of our analytical tool set. Before we jump in, let's review the differences between a sequential monadic versus a monadic design. Let's imagine you have three concepts you want to test on various attributes to see which one your respondents would be most interested in. In a sequential monadic survey, respondents are shown either all three concepts or a subset of your total concepts in a random order. They would answer the same set of questions about each concept they see. The point is, each respondent will see more than one concept and evaluate each one, one after the other. One of the reasons to use a sequential monadic design is when you need to get the most out of a small set of respondents. Showing each of them all or some of the concepts means less respondents are needed. A sequential design can also sometimes help rank the preference between concepts. But sequential monadic designs may lead to order bias, so it's a good idea to randomize the order concepts are shown to respondents to minimize that risk. Because sequential monadic surveys must ask the same questions multiple times, they tend to be long and can lead to lower engagement or fatigue. Now what if we take those same three concepts and turn them into a monadic design? In this case, each respondent will only see one of the concepts you're testing. They will answer a single set of questions just one time. The benefit of having respondents see only one concept is that their opinions won't be affected by having seen any of the other concepts you're testing, so they won't be mentally comparing them. There's no order bias in a monadic survey. You can also ask more or more in-depth questions of each respondent since the survey will only be one concept long. The downside to monadic designs is that the number of respondents you'll need is multiplied by the number of concepts you want to test. That is, if you need 200 respondents to see each concept, in this case our total sample size would be 600. If you have a lot of concepts to test in a single survey, monadic might not be your best option. Now that we've covered the differences between the two basic types of concept testing and surveys, let's focus on the purpose of this video how to quickly and easily build and analyze a monadic concept test survey design using AYTM specialized toolset. We'll start by using smart loops to set up our concepts, then launch our survey, then head to our results to set up virtual questions to compare concepts side by side, and finally set up and export significance testing results. On to the platform. Here we are in a fresh survey after setting up our target market for a panel survey. We'll pretend that you've already added your introductory questions and skip right to the concept testing using smart loops. Smart loops allow you to replicate entire groups of questions with just a few clicks, making concept testing super fast and easy. If you've seen our video on smart loops, you might remember the imaginary concepts we are going to use in this example today based on our pet survey, the no shed shampoo, the collar translator, and the pet sitting robot. Let's set up our smart loop by selecting it from the question menu. It starts off looking like an empty table with columns. Each row in the table represents a run, sometimes called a survey branch or node. In our case, each of the three imaginary products or concepts we want to ask respondents about. The columns represent the variables, the things that are different between concepts but that all concepts have, like a name, an image, and maybe a price. To add another column or variable, you can click the plus sign. Let's label the columns with the variables the smart loop is going to call on. Let's use product, name, and image. Now we can input our three concepts as runs into the rows. Now that our smart loop has concepts populated, we can click here and decide how many of these runs we want each respondent to see. Since we are specifically focused on monadic concept testing, we need to choose show one run per respondent. It is possible to break the questions out of a smart loop if you need to customize the runs. However, once you do that, you won't be able to automate virtual question creation on the results. Try to avoid tweaking individual runs if you can. With the variables for each run set up, let's add the questions. We'll ask respondents two questions in this concept test. One asking them to rate the believability of our imaginary products, and one to see how likely they might be to purchase it. As we write our questions, we'll need to use AYTM logic square brackets with our variables, the column headings, from our runs instead of the names of the products, since the smart loop will automatically replace that variable with the concept information. Let's check it in the preview. Looks great! Now since this is a monadic test, there's one more thing we need to check before we launch. Our target market sample size is set to the default at 400 completes, but in this case, we actually want around 300 respondents to see each concept. 
Because this is a monadic design that will only show respondents one of the three possible concepts, that means we need 300 respondents times three concepts, giving us a total required sample size of at least 900 respondents. We need to go back to the target market page and make that adjustment. Let's see what you can do with AYTM's analytical tools once your monadic survey design has fielded and completed. The first thing to notice is that even though smart loops look pretty different on the editor, here on the results, each run is presented like a normal set of questions. You can see how many respondents evaluated each of your concepts right here. What you don't see, however, is which concept came out on top. You can, of course, download the raw data in CSV format and process it offline, or you can use virtual questions to find out right here on the page. Let's add a virtual question to find out which concept came out the highest for purchase intent. One of the really neat things about using smart loops is that they generate presets within the virtual questions so that you can quickly and easily analyze your results. Once we confirm which question numbers asked about a purchase, here we can choose the presets for Q27, 30, and 33. It looks like our likely and extremely likely options were A4 and A5, and you'll notice that the top two box option here has already figured that out for us. Go ahead and click Create, and let's name each column for the concept it represents. Notice that our bases are specific to the number of respondents who saw that question. Let's click Generate Chart and see what happens. We can see right here on the page that in terms of purchase intent, the No Shed Shampoo won. We can also hover over the chart to see whether there's statistical significance to the differences. What this is showing us here is that not only did the No Shed Shampoo win, but it won by a statistically significant margin. The other two columns were not different from each other, but they're both different from the winner. You can do the same process for the other attributes of these concepts respondents were asked about. We can also take it up a notch and combine purchase intent with other attributes, like gender. Let's do some investigation and find out whether men's and women's purchase intent for the pet sitting robot differs. We can clone this virtual question by holding control to click and drag a copy, and then we can delete the columns that refer to the other concepts we're not going to look at. Now we switch to advanced mode and use a little bit of logic to add and gender equals F for female to this column, add a new column, and copy and paste the programming, changing only the F for an M. And we better update our labels. One really important thing to note here when modifying or creating custom virtual questions. The preset we chose for top two boxes automatically set the base of this significance test to the correct questions, meaning the calculation is run only on those respondents who actually answered each question, rather than the whole sample of respondents. Remember, since this is a monadic design, only about one-third of our total respondents saw each concept. So here, we need to tell the platform which base to use to ensure that it's comparing the men's and women's responses to their respective subgroup that saw this concept. Right here, we'll set it to the question that column applies to, and even add logic for the gender, so that our calculation is solid. Bases are something to pay attention to when you're writing your own VQs, as opposed to using the presets generated by smart loops. Let's click Update Chart and check it out. Now when we roll over the chart, we can see a few things. It looks like women's preference for the pet sitting robot was statistically significantly lower than men's. Since we set our bases correctly, we can be sure we're seeing that 28.3% of women who saw the pet sitting robot concept had an extremely likely or likely purchase intent, whereas 42.7% of men who saw the pet sitting robot concept said they would be extremely likely or likely to purchase it. And that difference is statistically significant. You can slice and dice your data using virtual questions in these ways and many others right here on your live results. Let's move on to the final thing we want to show you, setting up your virtual questions as banners to export significance testing results. Here we are back at our clean survey results. This time, we're going to build a virtual question to roll up or combine all the concepts into one, then make a second virtual question of concepts seen to split them back out again and compare how they performed side by side. This one takes a bit more manual labor, but it pays off in the end. For this virtual question, we need to combine all the concepts into one arranged by purchase intent. Remember, the purchase intent questions were Q27, Q30, and Q33. Our possible options range from extremely unlikely to extremely likely to purchase in sub-question 1, answers 1 through 5. So here, we need to organize the virtual question by responses on that scale from extremely unlikely to extremely likely. 
Because we want to combine all concepts across answer, we'll use OR logic and make sure we reference the same subquestion and answer for each column and label them carefully. Because our monadic design showed one of these concepts to each respondent, we don't need to worry about setting base this time. Let's generate the chart and keep in mind that this one won't show us anything particularly helpful because it combined all three concepts, but we need it for our SIG test export. The next thing to do is to create a simple virtual question to break out the concepts by whether or not they were seen. This will be our banner in the SIG test. For this one, we can use the basic auto population and pull our questions 25, 28, and 31, which is where we introduce the concepts. In other words, those questions were the start of each run. Label them clearly and let's go! Now that these two virtual questions are ready to go, we can run our significance test for export. Head to the Analysis tab, choose Significance Test, and adjust your confidence levels as needed. Now we'll add the virtual question Concept Scene VQ2 as the banner. We're going to go ahead and run Significance Test. The file downloads and we can check it out. So here's the exported Significance Test. Before we jump into interpreting the data, let's pause to look at this file itself. The first sheet or tab here is the data, with statistics included. There's another tab labeled Legend that will explain the notation and details shown in this data. The gist of it is, bolded text is significant, green indicates significance at the higher threshold you set, darker means more significant, and there are letters to indicate which cells in the row this cell holds significant difference from. You can also hover over the notation triangles to see the exact details of the statistics for these cells. Whew. Spend a few minutes with the legend to get a good grasp of this. Back to the data tab. This shows our virtual question banner on concept scene, and as you scroll down you can see how the respondents who saw each of these concepts answered all other survey questions. Let's skip to our purchase intent virtual question because that's what this is all about. Right here we can quickly see that the No Shed Shampoo won. It is significantly different than both other concepts with higher percentages of purchase intent in the extremely likely and likely responses. So there you have it. We've covered the whole process of setting up a monadic concept test from start to finish and showed you what you can do on the AYTM platform to help you analyze and interpret your results. You can take what you've learned here and extend or modify it in whatever ways you need in order to get at the exact comparisons you need. Remember that you can get help anytime you need it through our website by chat. If you're working with a particularly complex survey and need in-depth consultation, call in the experts on our research services team. Thanks for watching!